In this video, I will be explaining you theorem, theorem number 26.9. So here you can see the statement of this theorem. Let X be a topological space that is they are given you a topological space that is capital X. The X is compact. Our topological space X is compact. When X will be compact? If and only if. For every collection script C of closed sets in X having the finite intersection property. That is when the script C. The script C means what? Subcollection of closed sets is denoted as script C, okay, in capital X having the finite intersection property. When this script C having finite intersection property, then that X is compact, okay, that is what they are saying in this statement. The intersection C belongs to script C, that is, this C belongs to this collection script C of all elements of script C is non empty, that is. Every element present inside this script C is non-empty. Okay. So here, this is an if and one leave statement. So we have to assume the first part and you will prove the second and then you will assume the second part and you will prove the first. That is what we do, right? So that is what here also you are going to do. So let's follow my notes. So first what you have to do is you have to take an up sub subset of the, our topological space X. That is what the first step you write. So let script A is the subset of our topological space capital X. Okay. And then let script C. You are taking script C. Script C is uh, you are defining script C like this. Set of all X minus A such that this A belongs to script A. A is an element from the script A. Our script A. Okay. So C is equal to this. B the collection of complements of script A. Right. This is the complement of script A. Right. X minus A. So this is the complement of script A. Right. So that is what you are writing. From the topological space you are subtracting script A, elements of script A, it means that is the complement of, the, you call it as the complement of script A, okay, can you understand, so let script C is equal to this, be the collection of complements of script A, then these are the following statement holds, here you have three statement, first you have to prove these three statement and then what you will do is, using these three statement you will prove the proof of the main theorem, Proof of our theorem. Okay. So first let us. With the help of this you are going to prove that. So that is why first you have to prove this conditions. Okay. So the following statement holds. First one. Script A. Is a collection of open sets. If and only if. Script C is a collection of closed sets. It is obvious. Okay. Because if A is a collection. If A. Script A is a collection of open sets means. It's complement will be the collection of closed sets okay that is an obvious condition if script, once again i repeat if script a is a collection of open sets means its complement here its complement is what script c right script c will be the collection of closed set this is an obvious this is obvious okay so that is why when prove you don't prove this you will say the result is trivial Okay, let us pass on to the next second condition is A covers X. When A covers X, if and only if intersection C belongs to script C, C equal to empty. Okay, this is what the second condition and the third one is the collection A1, A2, etc. A, N of script A covers X. This collection of script A covers X if and only if intersection i is equal to 1 to n c i equal to empty where the value of c i is x minus a of script c the x minus a is the value of script c right this format the elements present in script c are in this format x minus a so that is why you are writing of script c here okay these are the three statements first you have to prove this after that, with the help of these three conditions or with the help of these three statements, you will prove the main theorem. Can you understand? Okay. So here. Okay. 
so here let us prove the first condition first you are not having any proof for that you are just saying the result is trivial okay so that is the first one and the second one is suppose a covers x means that is what you are doing it's an if and only if statement right so first you will assume this by assuming this you will prove this okay and then the converse part you will assume this and you will prove this that is what the procedure so here also you are doing that only suppose script a covers x then what you can write means you are writing this by the definition of covering okay union of elements present in script a is equal to x okay this is this, how you are writing this you are writing this by the definition of covering if a covers x means you can write like this and then you are taking complement to this so that when you take complement you will write x minus union a belongs to script a there is this a is equal to empty how you can put empty here i will tell you when taking complement you will put x minus this value right so you know that this value is equal to what capital x so x minus x equal to empty right zero that is empty so that is why you are putting empty here x minus this value equal to you know that in the just above you have wrote this value is equal to x that is this value is equal to x so x minus x equal to empty right so that is what you are writing now by de morgan's identity you can write this step from this step union becomes intersection and write the remaining x minus a is equal to empty is that clear now write this intersection uh you know that x minus a is what script c right the elements present inside the script c will be in this format so that is what you are writing intersection you will put c the c belongs to script c okay that is how you will write that is equal to this empty so you have proved what we have to prove by assuming this now in the converse part you assume this and you will prove this so you will assume this and after this step conversely in the step you will get you can go in the converse part you can go in the reverse order that is you will assume this and the next step you will get this and the next step you will get this and after that what you will get this and from this you can go here you will get this right in the converse part you will do in the reverse manner so we are not proving that you are just writing the converse is also true can you can you follow me and then you are proving the third condition the third condition also you are assuming this by assuming this we will prove this okay and in the converse part we don't prove we just write similarly the converse part is also also true that is how you will write for converse part so here look at this suppose this collection of script a covers x how how you have wrote this you have wrote this from this uh left side of this if and only if you are writing this okay and by assuming this you are going to prove this you are assumed it and now um, by the definition of covering you are you are writing this step and you are taking complement so that you write x minus this value in the just above you have wrote the value of this is x so when you put x minus x means you are going to get empty right so that is why you are putting empty and now by de morgan's identity you can write this step from this step so you are writing like this and now you know that x minus a this is a uh, an element present inside this script c okay it is in this format right so that is why uh you are writing ci here here inter ci right so you have to write about i i is from 1 to n that is equal to put this empty where you know that ci is equal to what ci is equal to x minus a the place of x i you are putting this ci okay ci is equal to x minus a the converse converse means so you have proved it by assuming it this you have proved this condition right so conversely by assuming this you can prove this side also you are not proving that you are just writing the converse is also holds how you prove the converse part you will just go from the reverse go from reverse that is you will assume this and the next step you write this and the next step you get this and 
the next step you get this and finally you will bring this so by assuming this you can prove this in the converse part okay and now you are going to you have proved all these three conditions now you will prove what you will prove the main theorem okay this is what we have to prove so here what you will do is you are assuming what x is compact okay by assuming this you are going to prove a uh, script c is having finite intersection property that is what you are going to prove so to prove that what you are doing is suppose x is compact you are taking script c and you are saying about this script c what this script c is okay that you are going to tell about it you are saying that let script c be the collection of closed sets in capital x okay in our topological space capital x you are having a collection of closed sets and you are denoting it with script c and you are saying that the uh, collection of closed sets script present inside the script c having finite intersection property so before going further you have to know what is mean by a uh, finite intersection property it means here script inside the script c i told you inside the script c are having collection of closed sets right so there are so many sets so when you find the intersection of that sets you should get non empty okay intersection value should be non empty that is what the definition of finite intersection property so we have to prove that okay the script c is having finite intersection property that is intersection of the closed sets present inside the script c is uh, non empty not equal to empty that is what we have to prove okay to prove that is what you are writing in the next step not equal to empty intersection value not equal to empty that is what we have to prove okay suppose if it is equal to empty means equal to empty means what here see the condition if intersection value you are using the second condition by using the second uh, condition you can write what a covers x right mm, this is an if and only if if this is if you are having this you can say like this so here you are having this right so can so you can say in the next step by this condition you can say script a covers x right and in the next line you know that x is compact right here in our assumption you are having x is compact so the by the definition of compact you are writing this there is a finite sub collection this of script a that covers x is that clear now from this you are using the condition 3 by using the condition 3 here you, you are using this condition okay in the next step so you are having this so you are going to write this in the next step so intersection i is equal to 1 to n ci is equal to mt where ci is equal to this so which is contradiction because intersection value you are getting equal to mt right you, we don't want equal to mt we want what here in our assumption you are taking script c is having finite intersection property but here you are getting uh, equal to empty it means you are getting a contradiction to this right am i right huh? yeah here you are saying script c is having finite intersection property it means you are saying intersection value is not equal to empty but here you are getting intersection value is equal to empty so you are getting contradiction and the two script c having finite intersection property hence our assumption this is wrong this assumption is wrong you have to write that also hence our assumption is wrong therefore hence not therefore hence this is not equal to empty this is how you will conclude the first part and now let us pass on to the converse part in the converse part what you have to assume you have to assume um conversely suppose look at this for every collection script c of closed set in x having finite intersection property you are assuming this finite intersection property means intersection value not equal to empty right you are assuming this by assuming this we are going to prove x is compact okay so by the definition of compact you are taking a an open covering from this x because you are going to say x is compact so from x you have to take an open covering that is script a let script a be an open covering of x 
now by the condition 2 by condition 2 what you have in condition 2 in condition 2 if a covers x means intersection a value will be equal to empty that is what our condition 2 let's see my note if a covers x means intersection value is equal to empty right so that is what you are going to write by using condition 2 here a is an open covering of x a is an open covering of x a covers x all gives the same meaning okay so here using condition 2 you can write this now by the hypothesis the collection script c so if you get equal to empty means what it is not having finite intersection property that is what the meaning right you have to get not equal to empty to say script c is having finite intersection property here you are getting equal to empty so you will get by hypothesis in our assumption you have took a script c is having finite intersection property right uh, here you are getting that is in the assumption you, you are taking contra positive okay so here if not equal to empty means script uh, c having finite intersection property that is what our assumption okay that is what our assumption so you are taking contra positive that is by the hypothesis you are getting equal to empty right so you can say script c does not having finite intersection property therefore there is a finite subcollection this of script c such that intersection value is equal to empty you are writing this by the definition of finite intersection property now by 3 if that so if you get this then what you can do is you are using condition 3 by using condition 3 you can write this sentence okay so uh, by the definition of compact what you have to do first you have to take an open covering and at the end you have to say there is a finite sub collection of that script a that you have choose to here that also covers x that is what you have to say to say x is compact that is what the definition so finally you have said that also in this this line so you have uh, satisfied the condition of compact here so you can say this x is compact so hence the proof